Good day everyone. So before we begin, thank you for those of you that took part in the competition in my previous video. Uh, for those of you that won the little competition, do check your email notifications for a code so that I can give you your welcome moon. Right, so with that out of the way, let's get on to a main topic and that is Hoyo's abandoned projects in Genshin Impact and obviously I've got a couple of points that I want to go through but the first one I want to sort of tackle is Paimon so you can see on screen she's obviously following me around and so on if you saw my previous videos you'll know why so the point here is is that I've been sort of like adventuring with Paimon and I've noticed that she gets stuck her pathfinding algorithm is pretty bad at tracking where you are as a player and as a consequence it sort of made me realize that the very same code that you that they've implemented three years ago for Paimon to follow you around in that little short bit in Mondstadt has not changed at all. So the devs have put in zero effort to kind of upgrade Paimon's ability to keep up with you as the traveler. And when I sort of realized this, I started thinking to myself, well, if they've effectively abandoned Paimon and the idea that she'll ever sort of accompany you, as you can see on screen, then what else have they abandoned in the game? And then a couple of sort of cascading thoughts kind of sort of grew from that. And that's actually what I want to get into. So the thing that I've kind of noticed in Genshin Impact is that there are a lot of older events. You can think of the Vega Bond, Energy Amplifier, Hypostatic Symphony, and so on. A lot of the old good combat events, especially combat events, have really just been kind of abandoned we've never seen those concepts again i think for me the most egregious example is the mystic on your chamber from like 2.2 and it's just like hoyo has all these cool projects they've all got all these cool ways of interacting with you as a player and it just feels like a lot of those projects are just well they're kind of abandoned and you might say well okay they had to build in a zoom and they had to build sumru and it's limited dev time and so on so yeah obviously you can expect that not everything that gets into the game will be worked on but there are certainly a number of very casual non-combat events that have been repeatedly sort of introduced and given to us and this is where i'm kind of irritated in a sort of certain sense because what it indicates to me is a change in the game's direction and what i mean by this is that whatever development pipeline they have there at Hoyo, in other words, features and stuff that I want to add into the game, they've clearly sort of changed their course and they've plotted out new development timelines. And why would they do this? Well, I can think of some very, very good and obvious reasons. And that is the player feedback that the guys get. So this is kind of makes sense. The Hoya wants to cater to their audience because if they don't cater to what we sort of want, well, then, you know, they would find themselves uh, with less and less people playing the game. But obviously there's a very strong casual audience in the game. And I don't think it's the feedback that necessarily sort of changed the direction in Genshin Impact. I think it's the fact that the feedback system or mechanic is democratized so what i mean by this is that a lot of the projects and a lot of the fun things that we used to sort of enjoy in the game especially the combat events and so on have been taken away precisely because everyone in the game has the same voice in other words the voting power that you have when you give feedback is the same for everyone in other words it doesn't matter if you are a or 60 it doesn't matter if you've only played the game for two weeks or whatever everyone can participate in the surveys that they give and everyone's opinion is counted evenly yes even though people believe that somehow the chinese player base gets more prioritized feedback or whatever that's just simply not true everyone gets the same uh, sort of like voting power in, in this sort of system and what it means is that the game itself is very much skewed towards the perceptions of people in a sort of casual setting so the very people that have given us the direction we has gone into currently with the lack of combat events and more sort of casual focus of the very same people that have stopped even playing the game and that have just been churned out or replaced by other casual players that are giving the same kind of feedback so this is why i think the game itself is in a very in a very different it has gone into a very different direction and why a lot of these older and perhaps really fun projects that could have served as the bedrock or sort of as an inspiration to 
giving us proper end game have just like been completely abandoned and so you might also say to me well what else should you do i mean if you're not going to give people a voice what is the solution and it's quite simple you make weighted feedback so when people are allowed to give you their feedback you give everyone a score on f uh, out of five so for instance you might say well your voting power if you score three out of five is three times more than someone that's only scored one out of five and you might say well what should influence the score well that's very very simple do you play the game yes you get one point have you reached ar60 cool you get another point have you 36 stars these power bits at any point in your gaming history yes you get one point have you consistently 36 starred the abyss in the last 10 weeks cool we can give you another point have you spent any amount of money including just one single dollar on the game cool we're going to give you one point and what this then means is that the game itself will typically be skewed more towards those that are more invested not from a monetary perspective but from a time perspective those that have more skin in the game and this essentially then allows you to get much more accurate feedback for what matters to the players that spend the most of the amount of time in your game and because Hoyo doesn't do this we're in this situation where a lot of the projects in the game are kind of sort of reassessed continuously based off of the feedback a six month or like six to nine months development plan for developers is sort of charted out based on that feedback and then we can see the results only like nine months later so even if Hoya themselves do decide to suddenly turn a new leaf give us all the wonderful end game that we want I don't think it's just going to come soon or probably only be implemented probably by next year knowing how these sort of development cycles and stuff work so at the end of the day what does all of this mean well it means that a lot of the cool things in the game a lot of the things that you would have enjoyed as an OG sort of Genshin Impact player and so on might have been permanently binned in the game and I think to me it is quite sad that that is the reality. I do think even regions like the Monsats, the little Golden, Ar Golden Archipelago and so on are probably also going to go away at some point. And for me, the idea of wasted development, the idea of taking away your freedom to play the game, that is kind of ultimately what irritates me with some of these abandoned projects. I'm all for projects that have evolved over time and you can clearly see this is what we had in version 1.1 but in version 4.4 we've got a more refined version but what I'm actually seeing is not really that. What I'm seeing is a lot of fun projects being taken off the shelf and just being replaced by very silly mini games and that's ultimately what's so sad to me about it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think and yeah, um, then we can sort of chat about it in the sort of comment section. Alright, thanks for watching. Cheers.